Siehst du. Hey guys, it's Zombrine, and welcome back to another video where today we will excuse the new microphone. And we'll be going over the second patch for Zombrine's Blender Rig Pack. Last time we went over Patch of the Living Dead, which introduced new mobs, the Story Mode category, and the Parasitic Invasion, which is still ongoing. Like last time, this patch has a unique name to go with it. Since the nature of my rig production is rather disjointed and random, it's a bit tough to settle on a theme. So for this one, I dub the Patch of the Luminous Trails. In this video, we will be going over the brand new mobs available, a new category, and my reason, overall reason anyway, by making this pack in the first place. Not in that order. And by everything, I mean the existence of this pack as a whole. I won't exactly get into detail about that, because if I did, I'd be here for an uncomfortably long time. So I'll just shorten it down to this. I'm an animator, or at least I'm trying to be one. I didn't think I'd end up getting into the whole rigging thing, but because I want to play with everything Minecraft, I now have to make everything Minecraft. So I'm practically doing this out of my own personal necessities and by myself because, frankly, I seem to be the only one doing this kind of thing, as far as I know. My rig pack was originally intended to be something of an add-on. Wait, no, 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 stop, stop! An add-on to the Boxscape Studios rig pack, which was backwards compatible with Blender 2.79. It isn't anymore, obviously. The thing I'm trying to focus on with my pack are the characters and items. Yes, you heard me right. Items. Which is the next category that is being added into my rig pack. When you open the rig pack, you will now be met with two distinct folders. Characters and items. The Characters folder contains all of my rigs that have been present in my other videos, while the Items folder contains objects pertaining to said characters. Like say, the Prismarine Foe's Axe, the Necromancer's Trident, or a Piglin's Golden Sword, all of which can be appended from its corresponding blend file into your scene. And speaking of the character rigs, a couple of newer rigs will come up with a unique armature color corresponding to its character type. All rigs will be updated to have this feature by the next update, along with the fact that all separate mesh with a few exceptions have been combined as previously stated in Patch of the Living Dead, meaning less mesh cluttering the properties tab. Now before we get into the rest of the video, I'll be talking about a big mistake, one of which I'm not exactly proud of. While I had managed to display nearly all my rigs in animation or presentation form, there was one that had managed to slip my mind, that did in fact exist from the very beginning. The Tough Golem. I don't know how or why I couldn't remember this one, but to make it up to this little guy, we will broadcast from within the rig pack itself and give him his own little personalized segment. All right now, hey, hey little dude, if you can hear us, can you wave at the camera? <laughs> uh, hey, hey, how's it going in the rig pack? Is it good? Is it cushy? <laughs> it, it, it's fine, I, I don't know what he's saying either. With each and every video so far in my rigs that's come out, the format in which these things are revealed constantly change from one video to the next. In this video, when it comes to the variants of pre-existing rigs that have been newly implemented in this patch, I'm going to reveal all of them from the beginning so that we can get into the new stuff much faster. Now then, added variants to existing rig packs include the following. The Green Tower Wraith. The Warden Prototype Variant. The hilarious Warden Story Mode Variant that I made for fun. Ruptor Variants 2 and 3. 
and the Prison Golem Jessicon variant. Now with those out of the way, let's finally get into the meaty part of this video. Starting off with the Miss category. The Sniffer. The winner of the 2022 mob vote, the Sniffer, makes its way into the rig pack. It has six legs with built-in IK, a body bone that allows for dynamic rotation, floppy ears, and a jaw that opens and closes. The Squid. This mob was the first ever underwater mob in Minecraft before the aquatic update. It has eight three-jointed tentacles with built-in IK, as well as a main controller bone for all IK bones. Of course, coming with a face setup and an included flip bone. Variants include the default variant and the glow squid variant. The LA. The somewhat helpful blue mob that wants nothing more than to hold your stuff for you is now here, sporting a tiny body, a small lower body rotator bone, and a set of wings. Ironically, I had a different version of the LA that I created during this particular mob vote, but since the release of the current in-game design, I ended up scrapping that one entirely. The Vex. The evil and twisted version of the LA. When summoned by evokers, it carries an iron sword and uses it by charging at you in the air. The default variant in a nutshell is a modified LA rig, with horizontal eyes, eyebrows, and completely different wings. On the other hand, the Legacy variant is a scaled down rig that I borrowed from my collection. With a tail thing in place of the legs, each variant also comes with a material node that can switch the texture from normal to its attack mode, which is kind of freaky. The Creeper. Ever try to model a pig and end up with one of these? Personally, I haven't, but that's how this thing came to be. It comes with four stubby IK legs that can bend, and a mixed shader node that turns the creeper into a glowing white figure, replicating its igniting behavior as it explodes. Variants include the default variant and the dungeons variant. The Piglin. The strange and greedy pig people of the Nether, who build bastions and ruined portals all around for the sake of shiny gold. The Piglin rig is similar to some others given its appearance. The only differences are that its head is two pixels wider. It comes with a nose and tusks, flappy ears, and beady white eyes. Variants include the default variant, the melee variant, the ranged variant, and the brute variant. The zombified piglin. The undead piglins of the nether, who get aggressive when hurt. The zombified piglin is directly structured after the piglins themselves. The only modifications are the lack of a right side of the head. Kinda like Gus Fring. <laughs> Variants include the default variant, the melee variant, the ranged variant, and the brute variant. The Zombie Pigman. The original zombified piglin before the nether update makes a return. It is essentially a modified zombie rig with a completely different head built from the skull to skin. 
and with pig arranged eyes. Variants include the default variant, the skull variant, and the blood variant. The Legacy Zombie Villager. The original zombie villager from way back in the day, sporting a green villager head on the normal zombie body. And that's literally it. That and it comes with a magnificent unibrow, like all other villager-esque rigs in this pack that is. This is also the beginning of the zombie villager rigs, which will begin in the next patch. The Blaze. The inferno-born creatures of the nether fortresses that spit fire at intruders. It comes with all its floating rods as well as a rotator bone for each set. Within the body lies a smoke emitter icosphere, which will emit smoke as the animation plays. Variants include the default variant and the soul variant. The Enderman. The mysterious and wandering tall creatures of the end, warping to and from all dimensions and are a crucial step to purging the stronghold and its mystical portal. The Enderman is three blocks tall, coming in with a jawbone and IK for each of its limbs. Variants include the default variant, the green eyed variant, and the inverted white variant, which disregards all shadow rolls. Now then, let us once again take a trip into the dungeons. The Penguin. The Penguin from the Minecraft Dungeons Fauna Fair season has waddled into the rig pack, which includes a beak that opens, flappy wings, and some IK feet connected to some very happy feet. Variants include the Emperor variant, or King variant, as it is called sometimes, and the Royal variant. The Key Golem. The sentient and rather frustrating Key Golems. are now available for rigging. It comes with a rotating keyblade, two very flat feet with IK, and a mouthpiece, replicating its annoying voice. Variants include the gold variant and the diamond variant. The Cerevex. A different kind of Vex that fights for you after using the Vexing Chant. They carry around maces and struggle at best, but they are very helpful in fighting hostiles. These come with bendy arms and bendy IK legs, as well as four wing bones, two ears, and a mouthpiece. Variants include the default variant and the reimagined variant which is modeled similarly to the Alay and Vex we mentioned earlier, and is inspired mostly from the work of Evoker Guy. The Icy Creeper. In Minecraft Dungeons, the only way to distinguish between a normal creeper and an icy creeper was the icy snowy particle effects. Though originally that wasn't the case, there was a frozen version of the creeper that was originally planned to have snowy details. However, they never went through with it because they wanted to, quote, not affect the creeper as an icon. Really? Even though you already did that? So I remade the texture for my creeper rig. Variants include the default variant and the dungeons variant. The Wretched Wraith. The evil Wretched Wraith from the Lone Fortress is here. Built similarly to the normal and tower wraiths in the pack, fitted with glowing purple accents, 
jutting ice details, and a piece of the Orb of Dominance right on its crown. The Piglin Fungus Thrower These piglins throw gaseous mushrooms at the hero, creating a harmful mist as these guys keep a distance. They are basically shirtless piglins with yoga bands and a basket where they hold their blue shrooms. Variants include the default variant and the zombified variant. Fun dive. Now let's turn the time back to an age of legends. The legend zombie villager. Though we know them as hostile mobs, it wasn't always like that. There was a time where the zombies were once a friendly clan of mobs, sharing flowers with villagers and living in peace alongside others. They and a plethora of other mobs battled the Piglin invaders. Given that all rigs pertaining to Minecraft legends have been vanillified, they will end up fitting the style of Minecraft that we know and love. Which is why the Legends rigs will take more effort than others, given that I have to drum up redesigns. This is basically the zombie villager rig we've already seen, but retextured and fitted with a nice little straw hat. The Legends Allay The Allays have been around for a long time now. They once had butterfly type wings and helped the hero by gathering and building to save the overworld. Henceforth, the only changes here from the other one is that they have said butterfly wings. Variants include the gather variant and the build variant. The Big Beak. This big bird was a mob from long ago when the world was peaceful. They allowed you to ride on them and were able to jump higher than a horse as well as glide in the air too. Kevin here has a big beak, no pun intended. Eyes from the opposite side of the head, a bending neck, flappy wings, and a big tail feather, alongside with some standard issue bird legs with the claws at the end. Now I think this is a good time to bird up. <laughs> the Regal Tiger. This purple pancake, I, I mean, sorry. This tiger existed a long time ago. They allowed you to ride on them and were much faster than the crack horse that the hosts gave you. This tiger comes with cat ears, eyebrows, a mouth that opens and closes, four IK toe beans, and a bendy tail. A purple tiger would have been the strangest thing I've done in terms of feline animals until I remember the totem of cat. It had to be done. In other news, let us take a look at the modded stuff. The evolved creeper boss. This giant three-headed creeper is found in dungeons on the planet Mars. It hurls blocks of TNT at you and guards a key that opens treasure. It's a bigger creeper rig with three heads and a big glass block for the middle head. It almost makes you feel bad for the other ones, especially in an environment with no oxygen. Almost. The Man from the Fog One might mistake stars for glowing eyes, but you can never be completely safe when the Man from the Fog shines his teeth from a distance because staring at him is a death sentence. He comes with a jawbone for his oversized jaw, scoliosis, and eight fingers. The Reimagined Cave Dweller. One might say that the original cave dweller was more goofy looking than scary. For those that share this opinion, this rendition might not disappoint. The reimagined cave dweller comes with the craziest jaw ever, full on hands and claws, IK legs, which is standard issue at this point, and eyes that come with a mix shader node that can make the eyes glow. The Blizz. 
This mob is the polar opposite, no pun intended, of the blaze. Emitting cold, snowy particles instead of the smoke that the original blaze rig did. It's pretty much just a cold version of the blaze, so the rigging is still the same. The Ender Soul Clone. When attacked by the mutant Enderman, one of the things it might do is split apart into these transparent clones. One of them is the real thing, while the others are just illusions. The rig is identical to the Enderman rig. However, the head is entirely replaced by different mesh, and the texture is animated despite appearing to have no color in the viewport. The Mutant Snow Golem. It appears that Chemical X has quite an effect on our friendly snow golems, giving them buff builds and the strength to throw chunks of ice at hostiles. There isn't really much to say other than it has a basic armature set up and a glowing pumpkin head. But part of me wonders, since this mob is pretty old, just how much, if any, influence was put into the large icy golem from story mode. I mean, come on, they look extremely similar. Look at it, it's un uncanny. The Mutant Skeleton This towering mass of bones and hatred comes with shoulder pad protection, an oversized jaw, a built-in bow, and to make things worse, arrows that can pierce through shields. This can also... Oh, oh shoot! I almost forgot. While we were talking, my rigs were getting carefully escorted through a mushroom biome in a portal that leads straight to the rig pack. This is a combined mission, an effort with rigs old and new in the hopes that they won't get spotted by the parasites. But then again, since I've just gotten alerted, that means that we've... we've been compromised. Okay. I mean, I guess let's watch. There isn't really much to do anyway. I don't have any original rigs that are able to go out there and stop them, so... This is kind of all them. There's a lot to unpack here. For those of you that are jumping around in excitement, uh, don't worry, we'll get to that. 
but for now let's let's take it nice and slow starting with the gnat if you thought the ruptor had any resemblance to the flood then this one takes the cake for spot on compared to their ruptor brethren these things grow into mobs turning them feral and rather terrifying it has three tendrils in the front of its body six squiggly ik legs and three pulsating lobes on the head the mangler when a ruptor gets a kill streak of 30 it evolves into this new form sporting nine tendrils in the front of its body five back head flaps and six ik spider legs Variants include Mangler 1, Mangler 2, and Mangler 3. The Feral Human. You know, for something smaller than the Ruptor, the gnat seems to give more disturbing results. Because when a couple of them burrow into a zombie, they become feral humans which are more powerful than the assimilated ones. The similarities between this and the assimilated human rig ends the moment we reach the upper portion of the body, if you could even call it that anymore. While the arms are merely disorganized, it comes with pulsating back meat, a completely unhinged jaw, three tendrils sticking out of what remains of the mouth, and an extended neck piece. The Thrall. When the assimilated adventurer gets 15 kills, I'm mean, sorry. When you get 15 kills after being assimilated and turned into an assimilated adventurer, you will evolve to be taller and faster, becoming the Thrall. With three jointed IK legs, three tendrils stuck to the end of both protruding sidearms, a jutting chest mouth with extra teeth, a mangled torso connected to a serpent-like neck, which is connected to the head through IK. The host. When an assimilated human or villager manages to kill five skeletons without dying, it will bring about the creation of the host, a living mound of body and bones that arise from the ground whenever it attacks. It comes with six skeletons, give or take, that stretch out in agony attached to a large tentacle which has smaller ones branching out from the sides. The inclusion of the host also comes with an extra bonus. The Assimilated Skeleton. The Assimilated Skeleton is currently not an existing mob within Scape Run Parasites, even despite the hijack skeleton being planned. It's merely an original construct that I created out of the many bone parts used to make the host packaged with some beautiful IK, two rib bones that open and close, and a very loose jaw. The Herd When a host gets around 40 kills, it evolves to become much bigger, much more bones, much more mass, and much more dangerous than its predecessor. Coming in with 10 skeletons, give or take, a massive seven-jointed tentacle that forms the center of the body, with ten smaller tentacles branching out from the sides. This, in a nutshell, took a stupid amount of time referencing the model from the game to this one. I am almost desensitized to the body horror in this brutal Minecraft mod. No therapy can fix me. And, and the funniest part is, we are nowhere close to done, because up next, we have... The Primitive Long Arms. When there is an overabundance of assimilated mobs, they themselves break down into mounds of moving flesh, which combine with one another when there's enough, and in doing so create stronger life forms, one of which is the Primitive Long Arms, a fast and heavy hitting creature that can murk any underprepared wanderers who are unlucky enough to stumble upon it. Also, can I just can I just talk about that footage? Do you have any idea how long it took for those flesh to turn into primitive long arms? I kept getting mangicators, yellow eyes, bolsters, anything except 
for a long arms. It took so long and I had very rough sleep that night. Coming with three jointed legs, I'm not even gonna mention the IK, a pelvis bone connected to a three jointed torso that extends with oversized body jaws that are connected to the shoulders of some very long arms. <laughs> you see what I did? Yeah, I mentioned the long arms because it's the long arms. Variants include primitive long arms one, primitive long arms two, and primitive long arms three. The adaptive long arms. Once a primitive long arms kills 10 aggressive mobs, maybe more, it evolves into its adaptive form, which can be signified by a bolt of lightning. The three jointed legs make a return alongside a very tall body, which itself is a giant mouth coming with six teeth bones. And though the arms of this thing resembles tentacles at this point, it's got nothing on the arms at the back of the body, which make up to around eight bones each, which is nuts. Variants include Adaptive Long Arms 1, Adaptive Long Arms 2, Adaptive Long Arms 3, the Abyss variant, the Lovecraft variant, and the Tyrant variant. Okay, 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 but seriously, you all saw that at the end, right? I'm not talking about the Wither Storm, we're not there yet. It almost looks like the rigs and the parasites have come to an understanding. Do they understand how dangerous the Wither Storm is? Yeah, I freaking hope so, because that would save me so much time. But yeah, things are getting very interesting. Yeah, at least we don't have to deal with any more infestations. I hope. Clunch. Made from a bucket of milk and eight leather in a crafting table gives you this strange creature with the likely consistency of a wet football that defies physics. This creature created by Broadnork is the perfect companion. Enough said, posed in a irregularly hunched body with four stubby IK legs. Variants include glunches one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and a zombie variant, which in some way can surprisingly counter the parasites to an extent. It almost makes you wonder. Now that we went over all the modded stuff, let's check on our voted friends and see how they're doing. The Great Hunger 2.0. The Great Hunger has received a complete overhaul. Made once again from scratch, fixing many of the issues the previous version had. No more texture glitches when moving the head, and the Great Hunger's stubby feet end up becoming double jointed, and they also come with IK. You know, right? That sweet, sweet inverse kinematics that we all love. Everything must have inverse kinematics. IK. Variants include the default variant, the sand variant, the red sand variant, the swamp variant, and the ender variant. The crab. This mob was a contender from last year's mob vote. It would have given the player a crab claw item that allows you to place and break blocks further for some reason. Packaged with six crab legs, one beefy claw, and a funny crab face. Variants include the default variant and the red variant. The penguin. Again, like the crab, the penguin was a contender from last year's vote. It would have allowed your boats to row faster whenever it swam by and is frankly radically different from its dungeon's counterpart. Coming in with some pink happy feet, flappy wings, and a basic face rig. Now for the final category in this patch, story mode. 
the Icy Ender Creeper. Imagine combining a Creeper, Enderman, and Snow for absolutely no reason other than the fact that you can. I couldn't. Well, I mean, maybe I could. But the admin did it, and here it is. This weird monstrosity has a similar construct to the Enderman but with a head fitted to stretch an icy creeper face. And because it stretches, I was a little limited on the face posing, since any potential bones on the lower eyelids would have messed with the face the moment it stretched. And since I didn't want that, you can only blink, and that's it. Sorry. The Giant Enderman. Oh boy, the admin really had a field day in creation land because he also decided that a giant freaking Enderman was a thing that just needed to exist. It does everything an Enderman can do, but big and scary. And the same analogy applies to the rick itself. It's a big Enderman with a glowing mouth, period. The small wither storm. Yeah, boy, here we go. Everything in the universe starts out as just a block. What comes of those blocks is up to those who will wield them. And in every block, there lies the potential to create or destroy. Nothing built can last forever. Are you guys happy? Huh? You, you happy? You freaking happy? The Wither Storm is here. I hope you're really happy. Once again, decided to give it another go with the Wither Storm model provided by the Playa Jam. Especially since, with my newfound rigging wisdom, my old video on modifying it was kind of hard to watch. But, you know, once again, still not a professional. And since this one is available on my rig pack as well as the others when I get to them, you can play with it right now, making the other video redundant. Well, there you guys have it. Zombrine's Blender Rig Pack, Patch of the Luminous Trails, is available in the description below. The Earth folder does not have any additional content to accompany the update, but we're not done with that one just yet, so stay tuned. From this point forward, rigging production on my pack will come to a temporary halt because I seriously want to focus on making Mince Raft Volume 3, The Recycle Bin Saga. Yep, yeah, there's a title drop. And with recent events, I haven't been able to do so. Nothing bad happened. I'm just getting used to change. But once that is all done, rigging shall continue. Until then, thanks for watching, and have a good day, guys. See ya. was that sesh whatever time to inspect and hopefully i don't have to do that again